Bookworms and people of the internet, I'm back with a, another uh, book review, and this video is a very special video. This time, I'm reading my favorite book. This is my favorite book, Radical Evolution, and this is the hard, the hardback copy. The paperback, the one that I read originally, had. A figure on it, a person it had some pretty sweet under boob at the top, and the skin was blue all the way down to the waist. Whereas at the belly button, there was an on button, like a computer button, like a like the Apple computer button on the belly button. And uh, <clears throat> in this one, we see Adam and Eve, of course, you know, highlighting Eve, which I personally subscribe to the um, Eve is the Liberator of mankind bringing information in the tree of knowledge to mankind and essentially like leading the way for us to be a free sound mind and body today so uh, as you see Eve in the tree of knowledge there it is I prefer not to demonize that character and um, <clears throat> one of the things I really like about this book is that it mentions one of my favorite deities Prometheus who is uh, not only credited with the uh, creation of mankind, but Prometheus um, also was credited with bringing fire to mankind, but ultimately cooking. Um, Prometheus was the ultimate chef. Prometheus brought cooking food to mankind, which is something that mankind prior had lack of experience there with. And here comes Prometheus this utilization of fire and ultimately stoves and cooking and so shout out to uh shout out to prometheus and uh you know there's other deities like icarus who we all know flew cl close to the sun <clears throat> and uh well yeah this book by joel garyu radical evolution the promise and peril of enhancing our minds our bodies and what it means to be human and what was great, and this is this is a, a book about robotics, but as with robotics, is ultimately about uh, the human body and the human form. It's, it's ultimately why uh, humans dabble in robotics is the human body and the human form and why robotics and humanity are uh, linked, uh, even genetically, on a DNA level. Um, <clears throat> but... This book, it goes into it goes into uh, scenarios in robotics, and the reason we're reading this book, which happens to be my favorite book, but this is National Robotics Week, and this book was written just before the time of people like Elon Musk, who com whose commentary on robotics is more of a stark warning for mankind. And uh, before uh, Sophia gained citizenship in Saudi Arabia, this book is just before these things. But one of the things that it talks about is an exponential curve, a technological exponential curve, where so every you know couple of years our our technological capabilities are advanced so far that you know what was just cutting edge technology is now old tech already before we realized it like smartphones just came into our hands and now that we have the ability to research and find any information that we need um, it's completely changing our educational systems um, for the better much much more for the better um, which is why I'm all for starting starting um, young with technology and access to uh, crucial information that generations prior to smartphones had not access to cru crucial information so the <clears throat> this book is really good this is a really good book it's a really good read and as president I would add this to the school curriculum and in, in for middle school students to read this book it's 267 pages I read it before right before I started speed reading 
Um, so as before when I read it, it took I read this over the duration of about a week. I for whatever reason I think it's because the information and it's so good that I really just wanted to take it take it in. That it took me about a few days reading it over a few days. I didn't just read it in one sitting like I usually do. Um, radical evolution. It but rehashing on it, it brought back to me. Um, the concept of scenario planning, which is something that corporations do. Um, as they say, the best way to predict the future is to plan it. And that is something that they highlight in this book, is that scenario planning came in about the 20th century, whereas the company will pick and choose a few different scenarios, say that if they do this or that, what course they're going to go along. And as, as far as their business plans go, as far as the money goes, and that's what this book kind of looks at is as we advance further along the path, the technological path, the scenarios presented to us and how things are going to play out. And um, so first I'm going to I'm going to review this book right fast and then I'm going to speak my mind briefly on what I see. Because this is this is my favorite book, and this is my favorite subject, and it's important to everything and everybody, and that's why I would add radical evolution to the school curriculum as soon as possible, and it's outright wrong to exclude it. So the, the fact that it's not in the school curriculum already, it says to me that Betsy DeVos is certainly attempting to commandeer the educational system of the United States, push out the teachers, and usher in agents of information for profiteering or whatever theological schemes they have planned. I don't like it. And the fact that this book isn't part of the curriculum is a signal to me that our, there is an attempt to co-opt our, our educational system in America by foreign agents and um, pushing the teachers out, treating them unfairly, mistreating them, underpaying them. And as president, I would root out every single attempt to Every, every single attempt to hijack our education system. I want, I want freedom for teachers, freedom of teachers everywhere. And one of the best parts about this book is that it has em like, uh, 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 emphasis on other books too. It has a plethora of book references in here, books that can be read about the evolution of man and where we're going as humans. And the most profound thing to me, when I first picked this book up, was, uh, was this. As you see, we have the evolutional steps of mankind. And you see the little guy down at the bottom, the little forest dwelling, you know, berry eating, sticks and twigs stomping little guy. And then we have, you know, Cro Magna Man and Neanderthals. And then we got the guy in the suit, which is the Homo sapiens, which is just today. And then there's all these other steps. It asks the greatest question, where are we going? What are we doing? And for the first time in our lives, we can actually make that decision. And that's what this book is about. This book was gifted to me by one of my good friends, by the way. Uh, my dude, Adam, in 2008. And Adam, uh, you know, the, the, this book changed me in my life so much. And Adam's actually had a pretty profound effect on me in my life in a few different ways. And um, not only being one of my good friends, but so this book's special to me and my favorite book for a few reasons. But <clears throat> so here's here's my review on the book and why I like it so much is that the scenarios there's three scenarios that it plans out and they're told by three pioneers in the industry, um, Ray Kurzweil and Bill Joy and Jaron Lanier. And Ray Kurzweil uh, he tells of the heaven scenario. Bill Joy of the Hell scenario, and then Jaron Lanier of a Prevail scenario, which is favored. And in Ray Kurzweil's Heaven scenario, our abilities with artificial intelligence become so great that it's a spiritual event. We enhance ourselves and our minds and our ways of being so much that it's heaven on earth more or less 
we and you know there's a part where he says <clears throat> you know so when the merging of uh, man and machine is something uh, uh, like uh, angelic form you know this is are we talking about you know we're having the powers and capabilities of angels and you know the question in return is well, what do you mean by angels and that's a profound impact that robotics is is having on our our imaginations and all, there's a real possibility that everything that we're doing with robots and technology and medicine is going to create sort of a a next level human that is impervious to all, all that we have struggled with on earth and really prepares us to to build our our infinite temple and be immortals and the next chapter is the hell scenario which is which i think is where a lot of people dwell at like you know if your favorite robots the t-1000 from terminator I'd remind you that that movie is not so much a robot movie as it is a time travel movie. It's like underlined and everything, but like time travel is ultimately what Terminator is all about. Um, but in the hell scenario, pretty much spells itself out. Like, you know, the robots become so uh, superior to human beings that, you know, they destroy human beings or they deem us unworthy of, uh, you know, being the dominant species of the planet, maybe like place us in the zoos. Uh, you know, name us as their pets. Uh, it asked the question where, where if there is like a Skynet computer, the one artificial intelligence that becomes self-aware and takes over, that where's it's gonna, where's it gonna come from? Is it gonna be like a a, a servant AI? Is it gonna be like a, a corporate uh, consumer relations AI? Is it gonna be a military AI? If there is one AI to go rogue and overthrow the powers that be, where will it come from? <clears throat> so these are all good questions, and in the hell scenario, you know, maybe mankind has every bit of doom that, that an artificial intelligence would calculate as being necessary. However, I believe that with access to the internet and all good things that mankind do that the atrocities committed by this species may be may be curable maybe maybe we have some kind of a a, a disease that through the process can be cured and, um but um I will say too, one of the apocalypses that's presented in the hell scenarios to create goo apocalypse, where if you ever seen uh, The Day the Earth Stood Still, the Keanu Reeves one, there's like all that, you know, the disintegrating matter. And this one is the most interesting one because this is where like nanobots, little nanobot factories and everything, they'd be, they like, somebody creates like the one nano machine that like can self replicate, and the nano machines just keep self replicating like out of control. Like this just happens in an accident in the lab where the nanobot just keeps self-replicating starts consuming all the energy all around it in the gray goo before you know it becomes this mass of self-replicating machines that just tears through the earth and just like ruins everything and everybody and it happens like really fast like in a matter of days that's probably the worst apocalypse scenario i've ever heard of somebody just accidentally like hits the nano machine self-replicate button and like they just relish they just rub make rubbish of the earth it's Probably the worst apocalypse scenario I've ever heard of, but also, like, who knows, maybe likely, nanobots and nanotechnology and nanofactories are unexplored, something that we have no experience with, and that we're just now learning, and accidents happen. Let's keep our fingers crossed that it, if we we're going to have a, a robotic apocalypse, that it's at least the robot overlord apocalypse, whereas, because, I, you know, robots are our babies, come on. Um, so then there's the prevail scenario told by uh, Jaron Lanier, which is, I, I like this one the most because, you know, when it, when it comes to working with artificial intelligence, you know, these are, these are like our babies. The reason that we make robots is to improve the human form. That's why we have such an interest and a curiosity in it. And... In the prevail scenario is basically just like people start to recognize 
the technology is moving really fast and we see what good it can do and what bad it can do and we start just kind of like pushing the bad stuff like out of the way and keeping it like keeping it cool and actually creating like a conscious awareness for a timeline that we want to create to to be greater with our with our great robot babies and we manage it we manage it we micromanage it and it, it's kind of like a rise above scenario it's kind of like where we see what we can do and we do it the best way we can and you know we're talking about it we have a global conscious about it and that would ultimately lead in the transcendence which is the last chapter in this book focused on transcendence and it's I, what the transcendence is basically just talks about how you know what we might enter the heaven scenario or become these crazy angelic beings might enter the hell scenario where our robot overlords overthrow mankind we might prevail through this and um, dramatically take hold of our evolution make conscious choices with our evolution and and do great things with ourselves our minds and our bodies to to you know seek out our destiny fulfill our purpose and in the transcendence and it just basically talks about this stuff with robotics in a lot of ways is is about um communications and becoming like kind of like a global species and they're talking about how you know we used to communicate through uh grunts and moans and we start making artwork we start making art and then later we make bones and then we got the computer hardware and all of it ultimately is increasing our abilities to communicate with one another and through these technological advancements in the prevail scenario we create a global conscious where our the human being the human species is interconnected and maybe we'll have like the the angelic radio as you see in the show supernatural and be greater in that ways you know me i'm anti-depopulation i'm the anti-depopulation candidate in all in all aspects i want more human beings i want if there's seven beings on the planet right now in the event that seven billion of them were wanted could be wiped out i want 14 billion to exist so then there's still seven billion human beings left i don't want to hear about Genghis Khan ripping apart half of the world's population i want half of the world's population to be double or triple like what our potential for an apocalypse could be i want more people and i know that we can facilitate them all and the entrance of robotics is interesting to me because and this is this is i'm speaking my mind here a little bit because i i see what's happening in this book and this book was written prior to this book was written at a time when technology is increasing exponentially we're following a curve so i can't call it which scenario it'll be i hope for transcendence I want, I want to be immune to sicknesses. I want people to be okay with their hearts, minds, and bodies. I want I want the the half of our genetics that's just going crazy inside of what might be a primate body to feel comfortable in it. And I want to take our evolution in a place where our hopes and dreams and our greatest efforts as a species are realized. And not, you know, maybe like still, maybe like still get good food and everything, but maybe not like not need it. And even things like sleep. Like I don't want to sleep, fucking seven hours out of the day. I want I want to do stuff. But anyway, um, there's a tornado warning outside right now. By the way, it's kind of it's going on right now. Tornado warning till five thirty. But uh, check it out. Quantum computers. The human form, the human body. We we experience about three four dimensions, of the eleven known dimensions, ten or eleven, whatever you want to call it. But quantum computers can experience all the dimensions. And that's why this, this whole deal with computers is um, really interesting to me. And um, computers and robots. Because the human being, like, we can meditate on the dimensions. And we will certainly be interacting our whole lives with the dimensions. We don't know how to consciously interpret it, but we do. But the computers can consciously interpret it. And the quantum computers do. So, 
When it comes to artificial intelligence and robotics and the human body being able to experience a very limited amount of the dimensions and being aware that quantum computers are capable of experience various dimensions, like all of the dimensions, my interest is there and I don't know. I don't know what it's going to be with those, but I'm very interested in finding out to the point where my attention and my focus is completely dominated by it. And even in, even in politics, which by the way, this book mentions the Green Party, Greens, even in politics, my ultimate focus and attention is on uh, computer intelligence, technological advances, through climate change, everything. Ultimately, my priority is given to uh, technologically what we're doing with computers and where we're going with our own evolution and the conscious decision of what purpose we want to fulfill as the human being on Earth and on Mars. So thanks for watching my video. My bad for ranting for another 20 minutes. I could go on. Not that anybody want to listen to me for 20 minutes. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I love you and happy Sunday.